What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lex Veltuis and we're here for episode 4 of the Triton High Roller Cash Game from London 2019. This was played during the Triton Million. Now we've seen lots of action so far. There we see Tom Dwan, crowd favorite of course. We've seen lots of big pots. This man involved in a lot of those. That's some uh, sick Mandarin there by Tom Dwan. It does really well if you're playing games like this, if you know some words at least, you know, to uh, kind of break the ice. Small words, make people laugh, some curse words always do well. And uh, we see uh, Mr. Liang here flopping the nuts. ST can't be too happy about this flop. Elton Sang has an 8. Now that's pretty nice on this board. He is kind of bad at it. He has a gut shot. Tons of open cards will immediately just give up. Mr. Liang though in the big blind. The big blind is going to hit this board most out of all positions that are in this hand. Um, exactly because people will play hands like 8-5. 7-4 suited, 6-4 suited. Oh, that's a bad card for Mr. Liang. This hand is going to result into a chop now. Unless any of them do anything sick. I'm not going to rule it out. You honestly never know with these cash games uh, when it comes to Triton series. I'm also going to try and bait uh, Mr. Liang into a possible bluff. Of course, we know that Mr. Liang already has it. Ooh, it checks again. Very tricky. Elton gonna bet 75,000 at it. We're playing 2,000, 4,000 pounds. Elton gonna be surprised uh, to chop after that reaction. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's very annoying uh, for him after you uh, lost a few big pots. You get paid there, you really think, oh, nice. But he did get a little bit lucky this hand. We've seen Tenshuan open pretty light in this cash game so far. Of course, we're also going to have a short deck um, session coming for you guys. All these cash games are sponsored by Les Ambassadeurs. In Mayfield, London. ST opening up a little bit. Oh, Shanghai Wang. We've seen him uh, re-race with these hands a few times in the past of this session, so it's going to be interesting to see what he does. I really like that he takes some really aggressive lines with uh, hands like this sometimes. Oh, there he goes. Excellent spot to do it as well. Ishak is a perfect hand for this. You block really strong hands, such as obviously aces and jacks, but also ace king, ace queen become a little bit less likely. And you kind of want to, you know, keep in the hands like king queen, king ten, queen ten. This is just a really good move. I, I like that he goes for a big sizing as well. Some of these stacks are pretty deep. Cash game uh, generally plays deeper than tournaments. Now I'm really curious to see what uh, Elton's next card is. In any other game, I would say it's an ace of spades, a nine, or the ten or eight of spades. But honestly, I don't know in this case. Why can Yang getting now uh, a reasonable price here on his pocket pair? He is 900k deep himself, but of course you have to look at uh, how much your opponents have as well. You can only win what's on the table. Big misconception about poker is that you can lose more than you have in front of you. It's not the case. He's gonna see it. Already 252,000 pounds in this pot. 
And let's see if uh, Shanghai Wong can find a continuation bet here. King high boards, very much in favor of the preflop aggressor. Obviously because of hands uh, like aces, ace king, kings, king queen. Very often played. Definitely a bet to win spot for him. Really nice. It's going to be very hard to, uh, to not give uh, respect to. He gets one fold. It's 80,000. For a pot of 332, so it's a reasonable price, but does it mean that you're gonna see the river? Wow, really good call here from Wyke and Young. He wants to see what happens on the turn. That's a great card for uh, for Wyken. Really don't want to see any more Broadway cards. Shanghai Wong finds a bluffer, I'll be very impressed. He has about 60% pot left. That was a check. Good news for Wyke and Young, he's going to be very pleased there. Now a lot of the time when you're in position here with the sixes, you're going to try and posture a bit to make it seem like you think about betting, just so you hope that the river is checked. But what a river here for Shanghai Wong. He gets there on the ends. Let's see what he decides to do here. Is he gonna lay the trap? Is he gonna go for value? He's gonna lay the trap. Oh, I can I'm gonna give up. Sees the bad news. Four hundred and twelve thousand. To the way of Shanghai Wong. Stakes are crazy. Two thousand, four thousand with a four thousand big blind ante. We've even had some straddles as well. Nice pot there for Shanghai Wong. <laughs> I love the needling after every big pot. I love it. People always kind of laughing at each other, trying to, you know, find out where the other guy was at, or if they got lucky or not, or when somebody makes a misplay, the whole table laughs. I mean, the game is the game. And competition is fierce, but these guys just choose to approach everything around it uh, in a very casual manner. <laughs> Mr. Liang, also on an 800,000 stack, has had a very good session. Looks at SD. He really does like to uh, flat call a lot with his strong hands preflop. Makes it hard to play as well. He's very consistent in it, which is good. You don't want to, for instance, do it with uh, ace king and then not do it with high pairs or. Lest you become unpredictable.
That does it for uh, Mr. Liang. He gets a check mark. That's why we gotta put the other structure. Fuck, put more hands. This is so brutal. Okay, we didn't start. What time did we start? 11? It's ending soon, don't worry. Good. Then you guys can change. Then you guys can change the shot there. No, I don't. Omaha. What? Where Omaha? Where is there? Are they playing Omaha? Yeah. JRB? Yeah. That's he's gonna put a small bet in, really hoping for his opponent to maybe fold out and like ace high. Mr. Liang really extracted the the most out of this pot that he possibly could. He's gonna min raise. That spells the end of his hands. What a nice spot for Mr. Liang. Tom Duan saying that he wants to play a different game. He thinks that Hold'em is boring. He has been playing almost exclusively uh, short deck over the last decade, I would almost say. And we lost Tom Duan for a bit. One here, some really strong hands. Pocket ace for Wai Kin Yong. A nice suited one gapper. Jackson suited one of the most strong non pair hands in uh, No Limits Hold'em. These guys just always play big pots. Wyken again with a pair in a re-raise situation. He's gonna see a flop. Miss Lian gets out of the way. That's a great flop for Tan Shuen. Not only does he flop a flush draw, but as a pre-flop re-raiser, you're very prone to have an ace in your hand, so this is an excellent board for him to represent a strong hand on. And it would be a great result, of course, to just get a fold if he has jack high. But we'll see if uh, he does bet, first of all. And if he does, if Wai Kin Yong lets it go, he knows how aggressive Tan Shuen is. We've seen Tan Shuen show up with the 8-deuce, the 9-5-suited, a6 offsuit, queen 6 suit at uh, this session, so Tench 1 is an absolute monster when it comes to aggression. And you can't always back down from it, otherwise he just walks all over you. See ST there adding on 200,000. Tench 1 is gonna go for the bed. Yeah. One third pot, you don't have to go very big on A side boards. Bluffs can be cheap because the board is so dangerous for an opponent, and you don't want to go too big with your value, of course, as well, because of that exact reason that you already look so strong. So, betting small really works on that board. <laughs> Cuts out 200 and folds. I 
I feel like Mandarin is so expressive because a lot of the time after this hand, you can estimate pretty well what these guys are saying or talking about. Or there's so much to do with the intonation of the words. Let's see this time with the low pocket pair. Stop, stop, set. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> Hit on the turn gives uh, Ten Shuan some outs. He has the ton of diamonds. He's gonna give up. That's it done, not the result he wanted though. So it's Triton uh, High Roller Series. Of course we got more Triton tournaments uh, coming for you this year. <laughs> ST gonna make another attempt at it. It's about 200,000 down, I would, I would say, this session. Joined late. Elton with a 7 5 offsuit here, really trying to make something happen. We've seen Elton be uh, very aggressive and loose in the past. Gets it done here. Ten Shuan incredibly fair in all uh, cash game uh, formats. He's one of the big winners in uh, in short deck. Beautiful cash game room here. Very old school fancy. Very strong hand here now for Ten Shuan. 
，最后中你这个位置我可以扔，容我说话我应该该是吧？最后哎呀，我真是臭啊！啊，汤，哎，哎，汤，等一等 ，OK。Tom's saying that he gets. I think he said he gets Jack Five offsuit every hand, <laughs> so he's done with it. Chang'e Wong, also regular in all these cash games. Tons of these guys play uh, together in the Philippines, Macau, everywhere. Private jets, constantly playing poker, in between business. Towards that big blind anti speeds up the game a lot. Also, uh, it's being done in tournaments around the world now, so that the dealer doesn't have to individually ask each player to anti. There's always a few people who always forget it really slows down the game. And since uh, a few years ago, everyone has been adopting the big blind anti. Ten Chuan gonna limp call here with Ace Five. I like that. You're gonna call the small blind a lot, so it's good to have some of the aces in there as well. Otherwise, it's too predictable. SD is a good flop here. Tom has a big blind to pay. It looks like the blinds are up from <laughs> this graphic. Tom, as a welcome back gift, <laughs> it's the seven deuce of hearts, at least the suited. It's gonna play it. <laughs> Not the same, still best. Oh, 
it's very interesting because it's almost been uh, complaining about being down and not getting any hands. I wonder if this plays into uh, Elton's mind where he thinks that Tom might uh, make a move just to get something uh, to happen. Gets it done though. <laughs> Shows him the seven deuce. <laughs> Always hurts. Flash draw. Flash draw? No. No flash draw. Ayya. I just had to play a little Omaha. Now you guys have no chance. <laughs> it sounds like Tom Zwan just went over to another table to play three hands of Omaha. Just to get his fix. Elton in a similar spot as uh, Shanghai Wang a few hands earlier. Now it's ace queen figures. If I play against four people, ace queen offsuit doesn't look that hot, not that easy to play, but it's an excellent hand to, uh, to try and bluff with. Maybe if he can get uh, three, three guys out, he picks up a nice pot. Maybe he'll play heads up against somebody in a pot post flop. And then all of a sudden his ace queen is looking a little bit easier to play. We've seen Tan Xuan uh, make a, a really big all in earlier with pocket sixes against ST. But I believe that was cut off versus the button, if I remember correctly. He's gonna just see a flop here now. A lot stronger when somebody re-raises against three opponents in a raised pot as opposed to uh, against a single one. He's also on the big blinds. And from the big blinds, a lot of uh, bluffing hands that people sometimes re-raise with, queen 10 suited, those sort of hands will uh, just flat call because they have nobody behind them and they can close the action. It's like a cheap way to see a flop. So, so re-raises from the big blind always do tend to look a bit stronger. Next curve. Next curve. <coughs> you win? Not unless you fold. Tom Dwan wanted to see the next card. He would have flopped an open ender. Wants to see some extra pain. Wouldn't change his uh, decision making process, <laughs> but some little extra entertainment for him in between hands. the limbs here until we got to ST. Decides to bump it up to 30,000. Some relief for Tom here. That's Ace King, already 60k in the middle. It's a little bit awkward stack size wise for him. If he makes it 90,000, which is three times the raise, it Seems like he's committing himself. I think a feeling he might just want to go all in. He does. I think it's a smart move because he's been complaining a lot about the action or the pace of the game of No Limit Hold'em. He's not getting any cards. 
So for there to be 60,000 in the middle, him wagering 300 to pick that up, it, no, you know, if, if I don't think an opponent would have folded there if it was ace jack or ace queen, just yeah. because of how Tom would be perceived yeah. at the table right now. So limp, limp. Could Where's have been a numbers? quick way for him to get a excellent situation uh, running. He's now also uh, sticking to the story by saying everybody's limping. Uh, what are you guys doing? Let's fire up some action. As if he was just bluffing to shove people around. I wonder if we're going to have the same uh, setup of uh, people. I think this would be a very good uh, short deck uh, game as well. Tenshuan, like I said earlier, really feared short deck player. There was a time uh, in Jeju where they were talking about on the table. They had been playing on a, a Chinese poker app the night before. Ten Chuan came in, won two and a half million dollars in 25 minutes and left. It's like a, it's like a storm comes in. Oh, we see some uh, big hands here. Elton Sang with the best of it. This could be fireworks. Especially with how aggressive these guys play preflop, you really can't give up any ground when it comes to strong hands because they will run you over. Flash one wants no account. <laughs> Tenshu one has seen how aggressive Elton has been playing. He's gonna go for a call. Wants to see a flop. Also, this gives a. Let's say you hit an ace, it gives Elton the chance to hang himself in a bluff. But of course, we know that the ace king is ahead. But Tenshu one is not gonna expect him to be uh, behind there very often. I don't know why I'm not the this man. Next year we'll we we'll love it. Together, we're a team. One yeah. businessman, one pro. We draw for who's businessman. <laughs> Makes sense, huh? Yeah. Talking of course about the one million uh, pound tournament. Biggest poker tournament ever held. Won by Aaron Shunu Zhang during this event. Half the field made up out of businessmen slash VIPs and half the field out of pros. Every businessman was allowed to invite a pro in. Elton Sang, absolute boss, could join as a businessman because poker is definitely not his primary uh, occupation. But uh, wanted to play on the pro side just for the challenge. Very small bets. Tenshwine, one third. I think this bet kind of says that Tenshwan thinks he has the best hand here and wants to just kind of make some money against weaker ace highs or avoid giving a hand like King Jack a free card. It's not really too happy that this is a heart. Definitely some heart combinations that Elton Sang would check the flop with, call a turn with. I think we're gonna see a lot about 
what Ten Schwan thinks about his hand here. If he checks, he most likely thinks he's gonna be good. If he bets, uh, he feels like he needs to force something. Where's the bet coming? 150,000. Now it's Elton, uh, Elton's turn to not be so uh, chuffed with the uh, hearts run out. Also might feel that he loses against a lot of combinations now. Wow, great bluff there by Ten Schwan. Gets it done. Oh, he calls it out too. Calls out the Ace King. This guy. What a beast. <笑>你們已經到了 yeah. I want to go play Omaha. No. Yeah. I already start. You already start? No. Exactly. That's why I come back and bluff you, because I was happy. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I play Omaha with you together. Ah, fish. Fishy. Judging uh, from uh, Ten Schwen's short deck skills, I'm gonna assume that he's a pretty tough Omaha competitor as well. Those games are very similar to each other. If you haven't played much short deck, I, I would suggest to uh, approach it very much like uh, Pod Limit Omaha. Steer with the best queen high. Silly Anger to done though, it's been playing very solidly. I mentioned it before uh, in the past episodes, but just Omaha together. I have to talk about the 5 3 hand against uh, JRB. Oh, okay. This is okay too. I'm okay with this too. Yeah. Play Omaha here. Um, you know, like everything VIP. Everyone wants to invite mm. to play. It's true. Game. <laughs> yeah. Tom is a VIP everywhere. <laughs> Tom is a VIP everywhere, he says. <laughs> it's not hard to become a VIP everywhere. Just follow my footsteps. <laughs> like ST. <laughs> Some marginal hands uh, battling here. Both players with a pair. That is two pair for Shanghai Wong. He's gonna like that. And Tom is gonna be so convinced that he has the best hand here after this flop gets checked. And 
nothing about that is changing, even after the call. There's a very big chance that Tom is going to go for a value bet here. These are the hands that really get you. You flop a pair, you feel like you're good the whole hand. You really want your opponent to call on the river. They call, you lose the two pair. That's when you're not doing well in a session, you really feel like these hands could be the turnaround point. And again, huh? Shanghai Wong gets the best of him. <laughs> huh? Yeah, deep side for Tom. Call? Here, button here, button here. <laughs> He's asking, do you call if I go all in? Oh, that's the worst when you lose a pot and somebody's trying to grill you if they could have made more. Nice banter there, Shanghai Wong. Sang dominated here. How long? Oh, five minutes. Thinks his uh, cards match up to the board well enough for him to continue. That's not going to be a good card for Wai Kinyong. He's up against the big blind. The big blind will have hands like 7 5, 7 6, 6 5. Alton just gets there. No. What's probably gonna win the hand with the bluff? No. He's gonna bet out at it. Might have been a card that Wai Kin Young would wanted to have represented, but does he get the option? Alton uh, fires at him. Okay, One round. No, I kind of see one card. Oh, you did? I mean, not exactly, but... It's okay, I just told you. I was going to call. Save me money. Probably. Yeah, just like, I wasn't trying to Pretty good flop for Wyken here. No Broadway cars on board. <laughs> He's gonna call the continuation from Tom. That again is a great card. Doesn't really change the boards. 
Takes a lot of the pressure uh, opportunities away from Tom. See if Tom uh, is just gonna go for it here. Probably thinks that Wyken is gonna stick around on the flop with a lot of eight high hands, maybe some gut shots or some overcards. At this point, he has to be a little bit wary of uh, Wyken having a pair. At this point, Tom knows that he can only win the pot by betting. It doesn't mean that it's always the best option. Flush gets there. Some straights get there. Tom is going to go all in. Why can Yang has a decision on his hands? He has a, a pretty important card on this board, the seven of clubs. He has two sevens to block the straights. But by no means does that mean that this is an easy call. Hundred and fifty thousand pounds. I really think Tom would have wished he had an extra 50k in his stack for this bluff. Makes the call. What a call by Wai Ken Yong. Well done. Great action there. So we're going to see these guys again next time, or at least we're going to see more action from the Triton High Roller Series here in London. It will be short deck next time for you guys. We're going to see lots of action, just as we did in these incredible games. My name is Lex Feltus, and I will catch you next time.